Welcome. This is David Bowles. Human Meme. Today's topic, how we train taste. Now, I have been fortunate in my life to have certain geniuses who taught me just what I didn't know, but also taught me to appreciate things around me that I was already missing. And I call that missing of opportunity taste training. And I am forever grateful that I was taught what was effective and what was not effective. Taste is something sort of personal and ethereal that needs to be handed down. Taste needs to be harvested, divined, fed, tested in battle, and shared with other people. And we can disagree on politics and on religion and money and, yes, even, at times, taste. Now, my taste may not be your taste, and taste has nothing to do with the tongue. Taste has only to do with aesthetic. Aesthetic for the purposes of conversation and conversion. Taste usually does not change, but taste can deepen and also expand. What you may not appreciate one day can transform into something appreciable the next, because you have been exposed to something that refines and redefines your sense of taste. One of my earliest memories of having my taste tested and my taste redirected and redefined was by the great Fred T. Witt of Lincoln, Nebraska. I was in my first year of high school, I believe, a young lad, and he was a famous local jeweler in Lincoln. And he made really special kinds of jewelry. You'd design something and he'd make it for you. And I wanted Fred T. Wett to make a special ring of gold for me. Now, before I went in to meet Fred, I had been thinking on this ring for a long time, planning for this ring, and I'd been saving for that ring for many years. And as a high schooler, it was my mission and purpose in life to write plays for the theater and to direct and to make movies and to try to bring a greater cohesion of understanding to the world. And so I told Fred T. Witt, jeweler to the stars, that I wanted a ring made for me that said CREATE on it. Yes, the letters C-R-E-A-T-E would spell the word create in gold across my finger as part of the ring. It was the ring. The letters were the ring. And when I proposed this ring, this golden ring to Fred T. Witt, jeweler, with the same sort of passion that I have just shared with you today, well, Fred Witt very gently told me, no, Fred would not make a ring like that. He did not think my idea was worth pursuing. Fred T. Witt believed the ring would come across to others as a more crass thing than special, and that a word on my finger would quickly get old and tiresome. Fred also said I did not want to wear graffiti on my finger. And so Fred suggested a more traditional ring that he would design for me with a diamond in it. And Fred said he'd donate the diamond if I bought the gold. Or maybe it was the other way around. And he designed a ring just for me that had some class and some good intention. Okay, I was in. I wanted create the ring but I'd settle for the tasteful wisdom of Fred T. Witt Jewelers. And after a month or so, Fred did make me a beautiful ring. 
And that ring looked like a wedding ring. And everyone at my high school mocked me and thought I was married. And when did I get married? And who did I marry? And I spent more time explaining my non-marital status than why I really had the ring on my finger in the first place. And so I was a little disappointed that the inside back of the ring was hollow, which now makes me think that Fred did donate the gold and I bought the diamond. And when I asked Fred about that, he said the gap in the ring was by design. It would center the ring so it would not fall off to one side or the other, and the diamond would always be centered. And also that the gap was there to keep the back side of the diamond clean, and the gap was there to also reduce any sweat that might build up and start to smell, Fred said. So I wore that ring for many years, until I didn't. And I agree that Fred's redirection of my intention was probably the best move. And today I cannot help to think of graffiti whenever I visit someone's home, usually in the Midwest. And they have fancy written things pinned to the wall like family or home sweet home and such. The writing is on their wall, not their finger. And when I was in graduate school in New York City ten years after Fred made me that ring, I sent the ring back to Fred to have it resized and to also ask him to finally fill in the back of the ring with gold. The hollow backside gap was bothering me. And Fred T. Witt called me and told me he'd resize the ring for free, and he would add the extra gold for free to finish out the hollow in the back of the ring. But he really did not want to add that extra gold. I told him I really wanted the ring filled in, and Fred said he'd do it. And a week later, I had the ring back in my hand, polished, cleaned perfect, resized. And while the backside was indeed filled in with gold, it was sloppily done and ugly. And it looked like I had soldered it or something myself, it was a totally ugly disaster done in distemper and bad taste. And so, a lesson learned. If you agree to have your taste changed and refined, then you have to go along with the all of it forever. You can't change your mind after ten years. Taste is not a buffet where you pick and choose what you want to believe in. Taste, like religion, is all or nothing. You either do or you do not. There is no try. And Fred Witt taught me ten years after he made my ring that I accepted his vision until I didn't. And he showed me, in the most clear way, why he was right and why I was not. And so the ring had been ruined, ruined by my own hubris. I had disappointed Fred in his old age. I had relented unto myself. Fred gave me the result I asked for, but not the ideal I wanted, and so I accepted my defeat. I learned my lesson, and I put away the ring forever and never wore it again. I had ruined a good thing. Lesson learned, taste averted, taste recovered in defeat. 
June Perry Levine was a film instructor of mine at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. She taught me how to read a film. I wrote an article about her in bowlsblogs.com. Search for how to teach a film course. And June Perry Levine taught me that taste is something you believe in. And then you bring that taste into the world. In the movies she shared with us, we learned through her instruction what intention means and how you perpetuate that intention into action on the screen and then into the minds of the viewer. Your taste comes with responsibility. Film can be a powerful medium with great influence and grace. Use that gift with wisdom. Your taste matters to you and to those you hope to reach. Marshall Jameson was a great mentor and friend of mine. He helped develop my deeper sense of taste. Marshall would always tell me not to worry about writing a script for money or for fame. Just make it good, Marshall would say. If it's good, nothing else matters, because everything else will fall into place. And I have told my students the same thing. If it's good, it will sell. You cannot worry about selling until you know it is good first. The Great Howard Stein is a favorite topic here in your favorite human meme podcast and in bullsblogs.com. And Howard's best taste training was, for me, that of sacrifice. Howard Stein was born a writer. Then came the war, and he had to make some decisions about his life. Did he want to be a playwright or a father? Some men can do both, but Howard knew he could only play one master. And he chose fatherhood over the stage. And he became a theater instructor... And he resolved to never compete with his students for stage time or money or fame or funding. And that was a real sacrifice. Because many today who teach in a university are indeed in direct competition with their students, be it business or publishing or theater. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot teach the student and then kill the student in competition. You cannot be loyal to yourself while training others to think what you know because then you never quite tell them enough to become you, to beat you. You have to have a disconnect with one God without cutting the other universe. A true Gordian knot. And finally, my human meme friends, we come to Hilda Raz. Hilda was my editor at the Prairie Schooner Literary Quarterly. I did many jobs for her, but the most important one was as a reader. To go through the piles and piles of submissions for publication. And Hilda said my job was to do one of two things. Write either yes or no on the submission envelope. That was it. No deep analysis. No st- structural amplification. Just do one thing, up or down, yes or no. And the no pile was the reject pile and return to sender. I was the only one who would see it. It goes back. A yes went directly to Hilda for a final decision on publication. And that was a lot of pressure. And there were not a lot of yes envelopes sent on to Hilda. 
and if you did happen to send her a yes, well, you better be ready to defend your decision. You had to redact and compress all of your training into one of two words, yes or no. And you did all of that thinking and all that work before that decision of your eye ever went to Hilda's eye. And that was a massive lesson in taste training. And you either won or lost as a reader. And there were a lot of readers who did not last very long in that role because they either couldn't make an up or down decision or because they sent too many yeses to Hilda. I was fortunate enough to be named the youngest associate editor for the Prairie Schooner in the history of the magazine. And I read for and worked with Hilda for many years. So taste is an important and underdeveloped talent. Today. Today, everything goes. Nothing matters. You do what you want when you want. Today, I go to the theater, the live theater, to be thrilled. And I often come away disappointed. And I'm disappointed because there is no sense of taste there. Is this funny? Is this dramatic? What happened? Why is there no center focus on the human condition? And what happened is, taste happened. The loss of taste happened. And there is no sweet in that bittersweet realization. Only the bitterness survives. Only the bite lasts. Only the bile lingers. There's no taste in bad taste, only anticipation in the disappointment. And there will come a time in each of our lives when we realize what has been lost and what has been decimated by time and distinction and distance. And we will quietly and with great resolve replace that loss in a drawer, never to be worn or answered to again. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.